hello there. Uh, welcome to the Coach and Horses for this week's Pink and Show, your dedicated Norwich City shenanigans uh, that befits the better club ahead of Derby Day. Uh, I'm Michael Bailey and in this week's show we will hear from Daniel Farker, Nelson Oliveira, Andy Marshall, Ewan Roberts, Paddy Davitt, Stuart Watson and of course our studio guests in the pub which are BBC Norfolk producer Richard Hancock and Eastern Daily Press Sports journalist and star of Sky Sports this week, David Freezer. Gents, how are we this week? You well? Very good Michael, thank you very much. Thanks for inviting me along. Absolute pleasure, great to have you on. Dave? Yeah, a busy mean, week? Yeah, a fairly busy week but you know... It's all in day's work. <laughs> Taking it in your stride. I appreciate that. Good stuff. Uh, so, as I said, we are live on uh, YouTube, uh, on pinken.com as well. And we've got loads coming up for you over the next hour, uh, half an hour or so. Uh, we want to hear from you too. So get your questions, comments and Derby banter through to us, be it on Nelson's comments, Tetty's injury or Farker's Parker. All you need to do is post what you want to say, your comments and questions on uh, the YouTube feeds live chat feature. And that will bring you straight through to this very phone so uh, have your say on what you want to say right um, having battled off competition from Steen Udegaard, Milky Mackay, Ian Butterworth and Darren Udderby it's <laughs> don't shake your head it's it's Wesley Moulihan's time to shine as we bring you right up to date with this week's headlines go Dave ring it one hull of a derby draw that's all right. One hull of a draw. It took until injury time, but City somehow salvaged it against Slutsky. May the better club win. Oliveira kicked off the East Anglian Derby salvos early and in style. Yeah, yeah, but we've got three stars. Town captain fails to claim the higher ground. It is going to be tasty on Sunday. It's going to be tasty. It's the end of the world as they know it. Tim Closer and Michael McGovern set for World Cup playoff showdown next month. And finally, say Coleman's. Hundreds don their old city shirts to back EDP's Britvic factory campaign. They are your headlines. You want to go, go one more time, Dave? Beautiful work. Well done, my man. Well done. Each one got better. It, <laughs> you were really growing into it by then, I could tell. Uh, we will get on to the derby, of course, uh, in, in a bit. But first of all, Hull, that point, um, they did well to come away with one in the end, didn't they? Really, Rich? Uh, Norwich, yes. you think? Um, could have been very different. Uh, you know, first half, two gilt-edged chances, one very, very close to scoring. I thought, I thought they deserved at least a point out of it. Um, I'm, I wasn't as down as everyone else uh, at the, at the far, it seemed to be at the final whistle. I, I don't know. I was, I was reasonably happy. They, they looked like they were going to score. It just took them an, a, a, enough time, let's put it like that. I, um, yeah, no, I didn't think the whole were great, and they, they had a difficult time of it as well. As soon as they went a goal up, you were trying to get the ball past two banks of four and they, they, they sat back even more obviously once they'd, they'd had the man sent off so that was that was no easy feat to break down that whole team and they, they were out there to defend and, and little else it did make me think that um, Paul Lambert always used to say if you, if you can't win don't lose and, and that was kind of the epitome of that I guess from Hull's point of view. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, I guess the people who were uh, not so positive about it were maybe the ones who left early because, you know, 96-minute goal, the, the, the stadium was noticeably emptying out, wasn't it? But, yeah, I mean, it was great spirit for Norwich to keep going. Nice finish from Oliveira and, and fair play to Marcus Diepenman as well with the quick thinking to get the uh, just about legal throw in. Um, but yeah, that, they clearly had chances. Yannick Wilskut should have scored at least one in the first half. James Madison hit the post. Madison just wide in the second half. So they had enough chances. And that has, despite the the excellent September, that still has kind of been the story of the season that they they haven't been as ruthless in front of goal as they need to be, really. Yeah, I mean, they did kind of make life difficult for themselves by also conceding a goal like that on the break that you know it felt really unnecessary it was really cheap and uh, in it, and if i had a criticism of madison from what i'm seeing from him he does allow himself to be knocked off the ball a bit a bit too easily uh, he's a young man and, and a fairly slight build so you wouldn't expect him to stand up in 50 50 physical challenges but he's he does sometimes seem like he's showing a little bit too much of it to opposition midfielders especially the ones that are that will be very keen on a tackle. Um, and as for the, yeah, the marking in terms of picking up the, the man on the break, uh, left a lot to be desired. Yeah, Tim Closer and Christoph Zimmerman have looked really, uh, really tight, haven't they? But that was one moment where 
Tim Closer got a little bit caught out by New Adika. Yeah, they got were in a real mess, really, because Zimmerman was far deeper than Tim Closer. I guess Tim stepped out thinking, oh, I'll try and deal with this, and then was in the wrong place, wasn't he? But, yeah, Madison lo lost the ball. He has become a bit of a marked man already. I mean, David Myler, I, his first booking was on Madison, but he fouled Madison six times in the game. Eventually, it was the foul on Wilsko which got him sent off, but Madison is going to have to deal with that, and he, ha he has dealt with it fairly well, but, yeah, he probably could have looked after the ball a bit better in the run-up to that, but, um, yeah, that, that highlighted Alex Tessie not being in the team, really, didn't it? We're going to have to make do with him for at least a month. That's the bad news, but we'll get stuck into that in a bit. Shall we hear from uh, Daniel Farker, who was reacting to... Uh, to Saturday's draw. Did you get sent off then, Daniel, or was it just a kind word from uh, the referee? A kind word, so um, I was really a little bit anxious because uh, during my whole career as a head coach, so 10 years, I was never sent off. Okay. So I'm a little bit proud because of this. Um, yeah, but uh, yeah, I was on the pitch uh, celebrating because I was a little bit on fire in the situation. And yeah, but he could understand it. Just listen. Um, if you do it again, uh, I have to send you on the stand. And I said to him, so if I have to do this again, so I will go on the stand, no problem. So that means we win this game and um, yeah, everything's okay. I think it's it's a proof and a sign of our of our working attitude of our together. Yes, of our our togetherness and so of of this feeling, whatever happens on the pitch and how difficult it is and how many setbacks you uh, concede. Uh, we want to stay unbeatable and and uh, we want to struggle back and we are always uh, able to come back into a, in, into a game and I think we are the team with the best score in the last 15 minutes so um, that shows we are in a physically in a brilliant condition we are mentally in a brilliant condition and so I would have preferred to, to win this game 100% and I think it's really ridiculous that we didn't win this game but I think sometimes it's it's more important for the whole season for for the spirit and for the attitude to have such a game like today and to score in the 96 minutes or whatever and in the last situation of the game and for that I'm really happy for that. Thing I'm, I'm thinking about here is when do we start worrying about the home form? Because they've been a little bit sticky. They haven't won in three at home, and they've only scored once, and they've not led in a while. Of course, I'm being very picky because their away form's been so good. Yeah, I'm not panicked by it. Clearly, they need to start scoring more goals. That's three draws in a row, isn't it? But the, the Burton one was poor. The Bristol City one was definitely better. And as we've seen, Bristol City were pretty much the form team in the division in, in September. And, uh, of course, the one on Hull, they should have won. they just got to start scoring more goals, and that's definitely what the fans want to see as well. I'll worry when they start losing away games. Because as long as they're... If, if, if one's better than the other, and you're still not losing too many, I don't think it's too much to be concerned by. Yes, people are going to be upset that mm, if maybe they're not getting as entertained as they'd like for the cost of their season ticket. I'm not going to criticise them for that, because I only just got my season ticket last week. So, <laughs> so that was the whole game was my first with my new seat. So, But um, I... Yeah, no, I'm not. I'm not too. And I've seen a few games already this season. I, I'm, yes, it's not as pulsating as people might like it to be. I'm sure, but as I say, they're not. They're not losing too many, so I'm not too concerned yet. It's a debate we're going to have, I think, throughout the season about the quality of the football. It'll just depend on how good the results are when we're, when we're talking about it. Really, uh, Nelson Oliveira. We've got to talk about him. It scores again. Leading scorer of five goals already this season. He's averaging a goal every other game for Norwich City which is remarkable I mean, you know, in terms of Norwich being criticised for some of their recruitment he, he's really sort of done the business slightly better than a goal every other game isn't it so I mean you can't knock that he, he is as far as I'm concerned he's the key man and everyone will have seen that we've done a lot in the paper already this week haven't we talking about how key he's going to be to Sunday and we've had a, a poll running on, on pinkin.com where 50% of people said yes he needs to play so the importance of this Ipswich game and how much of a statement it could be if they can get a win at Portman Road on, on Sunday almost warrants that if you have to risk his fitness a little bit, then I would go for it because I've just got a feeling with the comments that he, he said to you after the game and the way that things are building that um, I saw a tweet earlier that said, well, he's either going to score a hat-trick or he's going to get sent <laughs> off. He's going, to, he's going to be pivotal to this game. OK, well, should we, should we get in, stuck into that, shall we? Of course, um, the derby hasn't been a particularly quiet build-up so far. So let's hear exactly what Nelson Oliveira had to say uh, just after the whole game, but predominantly about Sunday. I know it's an important match for, for us and for the fans because it's a derby. And uh, we go there for win the game because we are better than them. We, we have better players than them. We are a better club than them. So we go there for win the game. 
Well, I mean, there we are. That's what Nelson Oliveira had to say. It's fair to say those comments got picked up. In actual fact, myself, Paddy David and Stuart Watson, uh, who is the uh, East Anglian Daily Times correspondent covering uh, Ipswich Town, we all uh, went to Portman Ro Road on Monday to have a big old uh, preview session ahead of the derby and check on how things were on both sides of the Waveney. You can watch the full video over at the Pinkin.com YouTube channel. But here's a little clip also talking about Nelson. I think you probably, if you had a choice and you're Daniel Farker, you don't really want to be seeing headlines of that nature because, as I say, if this game is going to be very evenly contested and you're looking for little fine margins that could tip it, I'm sure McCarthy will be made aware if he's not already of those comments and, and more importantly, his players will. So any extra motivation is a bad thing from Norwich's perspective. And, you know, it's funny, I, when I saw those quotes, uh, it took me back to... I was covering when Norwich were in League One and they played Swindon and Danny Wilson, the former Swindon manager, he more or less did something similar in, in the sense that, you know, a week or so before that fixture, he, he did some media and, and more or less questioning whether it, uh, Norwich coming down to the third tier for the first time in 50 years, whether they could handle it, whether they could go to the small backward back backwaters and, and dig out results. And, um, and then I was told by somebody who's still at Car Road now, so I've no reason to doubt them, that Paul Lambert had those comments up around a training ground uh, pretty much for the previous week leading up to the game and, and then Norwich went out and won the game so you know as I say I think McCarthy because we all know he's a very experienced streetwise operator if he's going to use those comments then that's to me a negative from the Norwich point of view. Mick McCarthy's sole motivation or prime motivation as he always reminds us is proving people wrong whether that's his own critics or people that write off his club and uh, so he'll, he'll certainly be using those as uh, some extra motivation this week. I think from an Ipswich point of view, I think it's great. I think uh, I think you're right. I think keep, keep those in-house until after a game. Uh, don't, don't provide the opposition with any more motivation than they need. So it's all, as I said, kicked off with Nelson. We've had Ray Crawford getting involved, George Burley. We then had Luke Chambers today. I mean, we, we normally have the quietest of local derby build-ups. Um, well, my boss won't like me for saying local derby, by the way, but the quietest of derby build-ups. Uh, not so much this time around, Dave. No. Thanks, Luke Chambers, for evening things up. Um, <laughs> our colleague Mark Armstrong uh, very tellingly said that he's sort of given up the moral high ground with his quotes today, isn't he? Um, Nelson sort of threw it out there, fired those first shots, and Luke Chambers has gratefully accepted them. He has. I mean, we've seen a lot of derbies in our time, haven't we? All, all three of us, and this is this is not normal. They tend to try and play it down a little, don't they? The, the, the playing side of things, but I think they, they there's a sense down the road that perhaps they're the closest they've been in a while to being as good as us. Is that fair to say? I don't know because you know they, clearly we've only just overtaken them this last week. It's been eight years. Uh, I think, is it, is it since they beat us? That's quite a long time. Um, so they've probably got a sense at the moment that they're, they're as close as they have been for some time. Uh, you, we always get bang on about, oh, they like their history, don't they? And we joke about the stars. You know, They were a bigger club than us once upon a time. They do have a bigger history than us. We can't deny that. Not, But history is history. The last 10 to 12 years, we've been, well, 20 years actually, we've been consistently in a higher position than them. If we want to get into it, Blackpool have got a bigger history than both clubs. Preston have got a bigger history. I mean, so it's a, it's a really, it's a funny old argument that we, we love bringing out, obviously. But will this all get forgotten when it comes to kickoff? Because I, I get in the impression now that Mick McCarthy will be using these quotes that, you know, that Nelson had said. The Norwich players won't like the fact that they've hit back at Nelson a little bit. They'll, they'll be neat. I can't believe there won't be needle when it comes to kickoff on Sunday. Good. That's what fans want to see, isn't it? You want to see both teams wanting it. You want them to, to both be a bit offended that the other team have said something negative towards them or, you know, um, the things that Luke Chambers has said about Nelson Oliveira being not very well educated. You know, I want his teammates to get around him and, and, and stick up for him. So... You know, obviously there's a there's a limit. You, you don't want it overstepping. You don't want violence on the pitch or anything like that. And you don't want the fans to get too carried away with things as well. But there should be a little bit of needle to it. Um, make sure you have your say. Get in your comments or questions on the Pink and uh, Show live feed, and we'll bring them up here uh, in the pub. It's not a studio, but it's a pub. It's pubs are better than studios. Pub studio, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the one thing that did kind of get lost was Nelson did also talk about 
um, how happy he is here. And you know, there, there was obviously a lot of interest in Swansea over the summer, but he's happy to stay and enjoy it. That's not the impression we were led to believe at the start of the season, was it? Everyone was convinced he wanted off. There's no way did he want to be here, uh, and that he wasn't happy with his position coming off the bench. Um, but that doesn't seem to be the case. He seems to be enjoying the role he's got in the team at the moment, and. Uh, and yeah, while he's getting goals and is adored by 20,000 fans every weekend, then why, why should he be looking elsewhere? Exactly. And we'll get stuck into exactly how key he is to Norwich uh, over uh, the rest of the show, of course. Now, as, I've, as we've been saying, it's East Anglian Derby this coming weekend. Uh, while at the end of September, it was FIFA Day, as FIFA 2018 was released on various computer consoles. I think that's the correct terminology. Uh, so earlier this month, we took one City fan, one Ipswich fan, let them go on about how great they were at FIFA, and then let them get on the game and see who would pick up the early Derby bragging rights. Here we go. I'm feeling quietly confident, but I, don't want, I just don't want to lose as this was found in Norwich, so I kind of need to win. Well, I play online all the time and I never meet them people, so we know no different really, he's just sat next to me. This time I can put him off. Just tickle his knee or something, that'll be right. No ref, come on. Ref's no fan. Here's the chance, and it is. It's the end of goal. Oh. Oh. Get in! Come on! Nah! <laughs> I think it was all me to be honest, I'm not going to lie, uh, you only had one chance, I think looking at the match stats, it was all Norwich and that's all it was ever going to be. The pride of Anglia didn't win for once, so I'm not impressed, a bit upset to be honest, let the tractor boys down. We're back, uh, almost caught me out then, but Norwich obviously winning. Uh, now, uh, the guys, uh, Rob Butler and um, Phil Daly and, and the guys on the scrimmage did a, a FIFA, FIFA game. Similar, well. yes, at the new setup down at game in the city. Um, I'm, I think I got halfway through the video and Ipswich were winning, um, but I didn't, I didn't see it through to the end. Sorry, guys. Oh, gosh. <laughs> oh, I don't know. But let's, you know, hopefully things played out in the right way, as we would expect. Uh, well, that was all good fun. Um, I quite fancy having a game now. Okay, go at it. I am rubbish at it, by the way. Uh, Speaking of games, we are in a pub, of course, uh, and this is an excellent excuse to have some fun. So last week, our brand new bar game, Flip the Bird, got off to a flying start. Uh, Chris Elliott took up uh, a soaring lead before eventually just giving up, leaving Adam Aitken to fly to victory with six beer mats flipped. Uh, so the number of beer mats to beat is six, which means it is time to ruffle some more feathers. Let's play Flip the Bird. There we go. Well, that was a sting, I think. Dan doing a sterling job on the iPad there. I think he did one of those. Anyway, we got the beer mats. Zoe comes in with the beer mats. There they are. The premise is very, very simple, uh, gentlemen. You have one minute to flip as many consecutive beer mats as you can using just your right hand. Uh, you are both right-handed, so that helps. Are you Robert Flick or Flicky Van Volswinkel? On the signal of Dan, three, two, one, go! go! Oh, there we go, there we go. It's just good solid start by these two. Look at, look at the concentration. There is pure concentration. Oh, oh but hang on. No, keep going, keep going, Richard. Don't give up. It's fine. Okay, We've got counts. literally that a minute. Counts. Dave's saying that counts. He's sort of officiating himself. 
Um, Rich, Rich is on four. Yeah, Dave's happy. Don't you don't need my don't need my um, you're the accreditation. Am I? No, you're fine. And Dave, Dave's happy. He's got another one. On. He's piling them up. Oh, Rich is more likely to take me out. We've got a good pile, though. Rich. Dave's Come ecstatic. On. Rich has got one there, though. This is very close. Oh, Rich has got two on the trot, Dave. But Dave comes back with one more. I don't know how we're doing for time, it's but it's very exciting. <laughs> Dave is lapping this achievement up as he goes along. Rich has got another one there as well. Rich has run out of beer, beer mats. There's another one for Rich. That doesn't bow well for you, Dave. Um, it's monstrous piles. It's got another one quick. We need more. There you go. Oh my word. How are we doing for time? <laughs> Ten seconds left. Your final push. Rich's got another one. Dave's got another one. It's neck on neck. <laughs> as these, last two week. <laughs> these are flipping two, marvelous. These one. two. Time. Oh. Well played. Well, well played. I mean, that was quite literally the most the most excited thing I've ever seen. <laughs> if the derby lives up to that on Sunday, we'll all be happy. Dave, your reaction. You're too busy counting how many you got. Well, it feels a bit like a 96 minute equaliser, if anything. You know, I, I know how Nelson felt now. 13. Oh, Rich, 13. Um, I, I will say, uh, I grew up with my mum was a barmaid in a pub, and I did oh, have this few, so I used to spend quite a lot of time practicing that as a kid. <laughs> Kept that quiet all the way through our little chat beforehand. Dave, how many did you get? Twelve. Don't sulk. 12! Oh. Well, it does no, put you both on the leaderboard, I'd imagine, at 13 and a 12. I mean, Adam Aitken cheated and he only got six. So, um, well done, gents. Top, top work. And if anyone beats either of those scores, I'm going to be very impressed. Wow. I am very impressed. Very rocky in the middle there, though. I, I nearly took you out a couple of times. Well, that, that is very true. No one, no one would have complained. Huh? Now I know how Hull felt. <laughs> Robbed. Robbed. Uh, well done. Goodness me. Well, let's have another sting. Dan, let's have another sting. Job done, job done. Dan's pointing the finger at me, which is always good. So uh, let's have a catch up, shall we, with what happened elsewhere in the championship at the weekend, shall we? Uh, the wobbles continued for leaders Cardiff in Steve Cottrell's first official game as Birmingham boss. Burton repeated their Carrow Road trick with a goalless draw in Bristol. Borough dropped more points, while Alec Neal once again saw his side concede a 2-0 half-time lead at Fulham. Reading bounced back from defeat uh, to City with an excellent win at Leeds. Ipswich lost to the Blades while it was Derby Day delight for Wolves and the Rams. Bolton's first win of the season coming at the expense of Sheffield Wednesday only marginally improves their position. At least they got it out of the way before playing Norwich next month. Reading, Barnsley and Derby all still have games in hand which at this stage of the season could make a real difference. As do Ipswich, but for the first time this season they drop below Norwich in the table. Well said. Um, Wolves take over at the top while Sheffield United continue to fly. City seat eighth, just a point outside the top six. Obviously all eyes in these parts will be on Sunday, but everyone else plays on Saturday and there are some eye-catching fixtures, notably at Villa Park, Ashton Gate, Pride Park and the Riverside. The Blades will be tested by Reading, while Preston head to the leaders. Anyone with anything bursting out of them that they want to say about the championship picture at the moment? I was speaking to someone today who said, we're a quarter of the way through the season now. You can start to put some meat on the bones of the table. I'm not really one for too much in the way of schadenfreude, but let's face it, it has been nice seeing Leeds come down a little bit in the last few <laughs> weeks after they were so convinced this was their season. I mean, there's still plenty of time for them to recover yet. Wolves are going really well, though, aren't they? they they're looking it's clearly like the team to beat at the moment, although we thought you know, that equally could be Cardiff. Um, it's, I mean, you've kind of got usual suspects you'd expect up there, with Wolves and Cardiff especially, but uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's shaping up. I think us, us and Villa could be challenging in the, in the coming weeks, though. I mean, I do think Villa will go close, which probably underlines just how well Wolves are doing. And you start to hear people saying, I think Wolves are going to win this, even already now. Yeah, they're looking very good. I mean, just, just from watching highlights, obviously, the, the quality of their play and to beat Villa... Um, in the manner that they uh, that they did, they're looking very good. I mean, Cardiff and Bristol City. I'm not convinced they'll stay up there. Sheffield United perhaps could fall away. Uh, if you look, that you've got Villa, Fulham, Borough, Sheffield Wednesday. You've got Derby in the bottom half. Um, it's you know some people might say it's an average league, but it's certainly a competitive league. There's not a huge amount between teams. So if Norwich can force their way into that top six, I think they'll have done pretty well. Brilliant stuff. Well, we're all fingers crossed. It's what we hope we'll see come the end of the season. Uh, right, let's get back to the derby preview, shall we? Now, Mr. David Freezer here was a star on Sky Sports this week in a documentary about the East Anglian derby, including Andy Marshall when he crossed the Waveney Divide. 
It takes a brave man to cross the divide. Step forward Norwich goalkeeper and 2001 Player of the Year Andy Marshall. I was going through a good time in my career at Norwich but I knew that I needed to move on. I knew that I'd had my period of time and I needed to go and test myself elsewhere. Um, Ipswich was one of the main clubs that came in for me at the end of the season. It was a, a, a bold and brave move um, moving down to Ipswich. I could understand why he did it, you know, they were in the Premier League. He kept it very quiet, none of us knew, we were all shocked. Um, he'd just won the Player of the Season award as well for the club, so you know, he was leaving on a high, but it just meant that he had to go down there. He was going to get stick off their fans, whatever happened. You know, the slight one mistake and they were going to be on his back. My career needed a change. It needed a step up in, in being challenged. And Ipswich was that one, European football, Premier League football. And it was something that I couldn't turn down. Were you prepared for how fierce the backlash was? I would say to a certain extent, but when I went back to Carroll Road, um, it was vicious. On March the 2nd, 2003, Marshall returned to the ground where he was once loved. I do remember when we turned up at Carrow Road on the coach, Joe Royal was the manager, and um, as we turned up, all the fans had come charging around the coach, placards, banners, throwing things at the, at the coach, and Joe just stood up and said, there you go, Marshall, off you go. And Joe just led the way and he just let me go. <laughs> And that just created the atmosphere, a good atmosphere within, within the players and the club because all the staff, all the players, everyone just started laughing and I had to walk off and face it. The first half I was defending the Barkley end and I was getting no end of stick, no end of stick. Every time I picked the ball up, every time I went near the goal, they were throwing things. Um, and then second half we went on and win the game. Did it cross over the line? Maybe a little bit, but I do understand Norwich's point of view. Really great documentary. I think it's being repeated um, infinitum on Sky Sports, but uh, if you can watch it, definitely catch it. Uh, did you enjoy doing it, Dave? Some great lines in it. Yeah, I did. It was um, nice to be involved. I mean, I didn't expect to get as much camera time as I did, but um, clearly there's a nice line there in there about me and my friend Isaac, who I lived with at uni. He was an Ipswich fan. Uh, somehow I didn't kill him over that two-year period. And, uh, yeah, we, we remain friends to this day, just about. Happy ending, a happy ending. We like the happy endings. Right, OK, well, um, let's get stuck into the Derby preview properly again, shall we? Has been a funny season for Ipswich so far, hasn't it? I mean, they made a cracking start. Rich, I think they, they won the first four games and everyone was going, oh, look at this. You look at it now, those first four games they had, they weren't maybe against high-flying sides. It's not quite mind the gap, is it? It hasn't quite got to, to that stage for them this season. They haven't been lording it over us that much. Yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd have to say it's... It, the, it's another Mick McCarthy Ipswich side, isn't it? I don't know a great deal about them, to be all not to be completely honest with you. Um, I haven't seen much of much of what they're doing in terms of play, but I'm sure they know very little about us as well. You know, they saw something the other day, people comparing, oh, who would you rather have, Cole Skews or Tom Tribal? And um, nobody's heard of Tom Tribal, of course, but we know how good he is based on just a, a handful of games. Um, they, we know how average Cole Skews is as well. Well, this is it. <laughs> but I think he comfortably won that particular vote. So, but you know, it's you know, it's another Mick McCarthy Ipswich side. You know, they, I'd be surprised if they stuck it out the whole season because they they just haven't had the resources to add any kind of quality to a, a relatively solid but decidedly average base. And they do this every season. They get well prepared. They do all right for a bit, but ultimately they haven't got the quality to see it through. I mean, they they. Missing Tom Lawrence, who was superb on loan for them last year and almost single-handedly kept them up in a way. They have made some changes. They've brought two new strikers, Joe Garner and Martin Waghorn. And there's a couple of other players they brought in that aren't fit, so they've got their own kind of injury worries too. And some of the fans have thought, well, he is, Mick is just tweaking the style a little bit. It's not quite as many long diagonals. Yeah, um, but I mean, you look at the players they brought in, Joe Garner and Martin Waghorn, they brought them in from Rangers. I mean, Waghorn, yeah, he scores the occasional goal, but he's not got much presence about him. Garner, you know, if he's fit for Sunday, he can be a pain in the backside. There's no doubt about it. He's, you know, he's a bit like a poor man's Grant Holt, isn't he? He will, um, he will frustrate defenders. Burson Salina, they got him on loan from Manchester City. He's not really kicked on. And there is some young lads in, in the mix as well, which I suppose is something they're, you know, proud of bringing in the academy boys. But beyond 
you know, Bielkowski in goal and, and maybe McGoldrick when he's fully fit, I, I wouldn't really take many of those players and, and consider them for the Norwich squad. Um, I mean, it could be that Joe Garner's quite a big miss for Ipswich because I think he's got a knee injury. He was having a scan on Monday, so he missed the weekend's game. And it could be that he's also out of the Norwich game, which I think from Ipswich's perspective, he's a guy who... Uh, he likes to wind people up, and as you said, in that kind of Grant Hull mould, I think Ipswich fans would have quite liked to see him go up against Norwich. Um, we're going to maybe look out for some key players to see if they can wind up a few things um, across the other side in terms of Ipswich. James Madison's already wound up opposition fans away from home this season, and of course we've already mentioned Nelson Oliveira. Yeah, I think, I, I think the way Norwich, as we've seen in the last two away games, the way we're going to wind up teams isn't necessarily with individual personalities. It's the it's the whole ethos, it's the, the culture of football that is just annoying to home teams. You know, we're going to keep the ball, going to make life difficult. Uh, managed to annoy Sheffield United and Reading in the last two away games uh, with the way we've played, and we managed to win both of those games. And I, that's the way I see it going again this weekend. Uh, frustrate the home team, that in turn frustrates the home fans. You don't need anybody to be a wind up merchant on the team then because they do it themselves. I mean, well, I wouldn't want to. I mean, I've already been accused of not liking referees uh, this week, but I wonder where people get that from. But um, uh, the referee is, is Tim Robinson, who was a referee at, during the Reading game, Dave. Yeah, I mean, Marley Watkins' red card, I, I haven't really got too many issues with that, but um, off the top of my head, I think it's 45 yellows and seven reds in. 15 games so I mean that's quite a lot of cards to be it for any referee really so let's hope that we're not talking about him after the game because and, and let's hope that no one gives him any you know opportunities to make sure that he's the man that we're talking about I'm sure he'll keep everything perfectly calm and use his cards only re reasonably I mean there are a lot of times he didn't use his cards at Reading so you know well done him uh, right uh, let's have a look shall we at the 11s we like to ask the guys who they would pick for their 11s if they were in the dugout at Portman Road on Sunday lunchtime. So let's start with Dave, shall we? I think I've got that right. Uh, Dave, let's have a look at your 11 and you will start with Nelson Oliveira. If he's fit enough to start, I start him, yeah. And, and in this shape, I mean, I've been maybe a little bit argumentative with it. Um, I've gone with Houlihan, Madison and Vrancic as obviously a very attacking, technical attacking midfield. I feel if you're going to play Oliveira, then you want them to be linking together and then you have that solid defensive base, that back four, both the fullbacks, as we've seen in recent games, aren't committing forward as certainly if you think what we've seen from Ivo Pinto in the past, he doesn't he hasn't been bombing on quite as much as he used to. But the one I'm I'm a bit worried about is Harrison Reed. I'm, I like Harrison Reed as a ball player, as a as a, a passer, he's he's very good, but I'm not sure he's got the physicality and and somebody who seems like he's more than capable of stepping into that role alongside Tom Tribal is Marcus Steeperman. And I don't know, I I'd like to see it. I know it's a big game to try it, but I've got. I feel like Harrison Reed's being a bit overwhelmed, so I'd, I'd like to see it tried. I have to say, when I when I saw your eleven, I thought I like that. I like that. So we have to manager, see. isn't it? You know, it's, it's living in an ideal world, but uh, I think it would do a good job. We'll see. Of course, it's not up to us, but uh, I mean, there's a fair chance of uh, Daniel Parker playing Steepman. Whether we play him there, but I've seen James' husband has definitely kicked on in in recent weeks. Rich, should we have a look at your eleven? It's a little more conservative. Um, it's it's pretty much the team that played against Reading, except Reed. Reed, uh, because Chetty's obviously injured. Um, I'm, I mean, you'd mentioned James Husband there. I've been really impressed with him the last couple of games I've seen after thinking, not being too sure about him in, at the start of the season. Um, I think Vilska is just, he's positive enough to, to keep in there. Um, I like what I've seen from him this season. He just, he just barrels on uh, down that wing. You, you don't get the feeling that once he go, he gets going much is going to stop him. Yeah, he's not, me and Dave were talking about this earlier, he's not a smart player, you're not going to get a clever ball from him I don't think at any point, but he's he's just got that physicality which I think you're going to need in the way game like this and that's why I'd start with Jerome up front as well. Um, I do see why people want Oliveira to start games, uh, I can understand it, but I think the tactic of starting Jerome and bringing Oliveira on, it's a its a bit of a classic rope a thing. You know, Jerome can beat him up for 70 minutes and then Oliveira can come on and do his thing once their back four has been tied out. It's, it, that's, so that's why I'd start with, with Cameron. I, I do think that Daniel will start with Cam as, as well, but it's an interesting one with Yannick because um, he was very good in the first half, I thought, on Saturday on the left and with a lot of space ahead of him. When he came across to the right and he had Ivo Pinto running ahead of him a lot, 
there wasn't the same space ahead of him and he didn't seem to get forward as much. But he does seem to have impressed more away from home, doesn't he? Yannick is frustrating because if he had a final ball, I mean, you've got a Premier League player there. He is fast and he is strong. He really should have scored when Brancic put him clean through in the first half. That was one that really should have been put away. And he went close with another one. But his crossing isn't up to much particularly either. Um, he seems to be more of a finisher than a crosser. And there are times when he almost just looks like a schoolboy playing because he just his head is down. He's not looking up, looking for the option in the box. So he needs to improve that final part of his game. That's interesting. I don't know if I'm... I don't mind his final ball so much, but I do think he switches off a lot, which I think can be... Well, he's fun to watch, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. But if he could just get that final ball, he'd be brilliant. OK, brilliant stuff, gents. Uh, we've got one question on the old YouTube feed. Well done there, Adam Harvey. He's been in touch. Uh, three league fixtures left this month. How many points would you take? Now, it's worth saying we have, of course, Ipswich on Sunday. Norwich then go to Arsenal, taking almost 9,000 fans with them to the Emirates in the last 16 of the Carabao Cup. Round of applause indeed. Then it is Derby at home, I think, and then Wolves in midweek at Carrow Road. Two big games, three huge, three huge games. What would we take? Two of them are at home, DF. What would we take? Oh, that's a tough question. I mean, I, I would... Oh, that's a big question. I mean, five. Right, I suppose five would be acceptable, but I would hope for six. Yeah, I, I'd, I'd say I'd, I'd happily take five from those three games. I mean, let's be honest, if they didn't lose in the three games, that would be 11 unbeaten, which I think might be a So imagine if they do win, win one, make sure you... Uh, sorry, if they do lose one, make sure you win two of them. And then obviously win at Arsenal. Everyone will be really happy. We look forward to that. Would be the easy one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Quarterfinals of the Carabao Cup. Here we come. Last question is for predictions, gents. There is one tough question to come. Prediction for Sunday, the Derby. I don't know how many options you've got here because you know you're sat in an Norwich pub. It's a Norwich City away game. One 0 win. <laughs> Who's going to get the goal, Rich? Uh, Oliveira. Last ten minutes. What a day that would be. That sounds nice, and I do think Richard's team is much more likely than mine. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go 2 1. I just feel that things are going Norwich's way at the moment, and uh, I, I feel like there, there's going to be someone who's going to step up, and I think that's Nelson Oliveira. Well, there we go. Optimism all round here at the Coach and Horses. Uh, we are done. Thank you so much. Now, remember, you can um, catch the show and all our superb Norwich City content uh, on the Pinkin YouTube channel, the Pinkin Facebook page, and of course, pinken.com that includes clips and analysis from Colney on Friday in the pre-match press conference and then of course Sunday's big one at Portman Road uh, where myself Dave Freezer and Paddy Davitt will all be there to bring you all the build-up live coverage and of course fallout from the latest East Anglian derby uh, for now it's a big thanks to all the crew here to the Coach and Horses pub to uh, David and Richard for joining us thank you very much gentlemen much appreciated uh, and to you for watching and getting involved uh, we've got a busy midweek coming up for the next couple of weeks so the pink and show will be back live on wednesday november the 8th at 7 p.m uh, here again at the coach and horses so we can get another drink in so that's always good uh, and as always if you're near the pub at the time come in pop in grab a pint and come join us for the show uh, until then here's the city painting ipswich yellow and green once again on sunday good night <laughs>